parallelogram law of forces Before we learn about the parallelogram law of forces let us quickly review some of the basic physics concepts that form the foundation for this law The first concept is resultant of forces when two forces a and b act on a body along different directions the combined effect of the two forces pushes the body in the direction that is in between the two forces in other words the effect of the two forces on the body is equivalent to one single force that acts in a direction that is in between the two forces this single force that is equivalent to the effect of the two forces is called the resultant force say r if force a is stronger than force b then r would be closer to a if b is stronger than a then r would be closer to b the magnitude of a force is the numerical value of the strength of the force So in this example the magnitude of force A is 2 newtons the direction of a force is the direction towards which the force is acting in this example the direction of force A is the direction indicated by the arrow mark the second concept we are going to look at is parallelogram A parallelogram is a closed geometric figure. It has four sides. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel to each other and are equal in length. In this figure, side AB and side CD are opposite to each other. AB and CD are parallel to each other and the length of AB is the same as the length of CD. Similarly, sides AD and BC are parallel to each other and have the same lengths the next concept we are going to look at is right angled triangle in a right angled triangle one of the three angles is a right angle that is 90 degrees the longest side of the triangle that is the side opposite to the 90 degree angle is called the hypotenuse Let's take one of the angles in the triangle say alpha the side adjacent to alpha is called the adjacent side and the side opposite to alpha is called the opposite side and sin alpha is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse cos alpha is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse tan alpha is equal to sin alpha by cos alpha also in a right angled triangle hypotenuse squared is equal to adjacent side squared plus opposite side squared now let's actually look at the parallelogram law of forces The parallelogram law of forces states that if two forces acting at a point are represented in magnitude and direction by the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram then their resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram that passes through that point Let's understand more about this law through an example. Let's draw a line OA that represents force P. The length of OA represents the magnitude of P. If the magnitude of P is 4 newtons, then the length of OA is 4 cm, 4 inch or any other value that is proportional to the magnitude 4 newtons depending on the scale you choose. let o b represent another force q 
if q is 5 newton the length of ob is proportional to 5 newtons measured in the same scale as the one used for oa that is if oa is 4 cm then ob is 5 cm the arrow marks on oa and ob represent the directions of the two forces so oa and ob represent forces p and q respectively in magnitude and direction now let's complete the parallelogram by drawing bc parallel to oa and ac parallel to ob according to the parallelogram law of forces the diagonal oc that passes through the point of action of p and q represents the resultant of the two forces in magnitude and direction the length of the diagonal represents the magnitude of the resultant force and the arrow mark represents the direction of the resultant force magnitude of the resultant force let's derive a formula for calculating the magnitude of the resultant force extend the line oa further draw a line perpendicular to oa that passes through c let's name the point of intersection as d the angle at d is 90 degrees the triangle cad is a right angled triangle consider the angle between p and q as alpha since ac is parallel and equal to ob ac equal to q and angle cad is equal to alpha in triangle acd sin alpha is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse which is cd by ac sin alpha is equal to cd by ac let's flip the right hand side and the left hand side in the equation cd by ac is equal to sin alpha so cd is equal to ac into sin alpha we know that ac is equal to q so cd is equal to q sin alpha similarly cos alpha is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse cos alpha is equal to ad by ac flipping the right hand side and the left hand side of the equation ad by ac is equal to cos alpha that is ad is equal to ac cos alpha since ac is equal to q ad is equal to q cos alpha we have arrived at two important equations that we'll be using for our calculation later in the right angle triangle ocd oc square is equal to cd square plus od square we know that od comprises of oa and ad so we can write od as oa plus ad and oc represents r the resultant force so oc equal to r let's replace oc by r in the equation and oa represents p so let's replace oa with p now let's make use of one of the equations we derived earlier ad is equal to q cos alpha let's replace ad in the equation with q cos alpha similarly let's replace cd with q sin alpha let's expand p plus q cos alpha the whole square it becomes p squared plus q squared cos squared alpha plus 2 pq cos alpha let's remove the brackets let's shuffle the first two elements on the right hand side to make it easier consider q squared sin squared alpha and q squared cos squared alpha both have q squared in common so let's write it as q squared into sin squared alpha plus cos squared alpha 
we know that sin squared alpha plus cos squared alpha is equal to 1. So the equation becomes r squared is equal to p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cos alpha. That helps us derive the important equation for calculating the magnitude of the resultant force. r is equal to square root of p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cos alpha. Let's now derive an equation for calculating the direction of the resultant force. The direction of the resultant force means angle COA. Let's call it theta. In right angled triangle OCD, tan theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. That is CD divided by OD. We know that OD comprises of OA and AD so we're writing OD as OA plus AD in the equation and OA is equal to P so we replace OA with P. So let's use one of the equations that we derived earlier. CD is equal to Q sin alpha. So we replace CD with Q sin alpha. Similarly, we replace AD with Q cos alpha. So the equation becomes tan theta is equal to Q sin alpha divided by P plus Q cos alpha. That is theta is equal to tan inverse of q sin alpha divided by p plus q cos alpha. So we have arrived at two different equations, one for calculating the magnitude of the resultant force and the other one for calculating the direction of the resultant force. Magnitude is calculated as r is equal to square root of p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cos alpha and the direction of the resultant force is calculated using the formula theta is equal to tan inverse of q sin alpha divided by p plus q cos alpha. Let's see what happens to these equations for calculating the magnitude and direction of the resultant force in two special cases. Case 1 when the two forces P and Q are perpendicular to each other and case 2 when P and Q are having the same magnitude. Let's see each of these cases in detail. Case 1 the two forces are perpendicular to each other. If the two forces P and Q are perpendicular to each other then alpha is 90 degrees. Then the magnitude of the resultant becomes r is equal to square root of p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cos alpha becomes square root of p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cos 90 degrees. Cos 90 degrees is 0. So r becomes square root of p squared plus q squared. Now let's see what happens to the equation for calculating the direction of the resultant. Theta is equal to tan inverse of Q sin alpha divided by P plus Q cos alpha. So substituting alpha with 90 degrees, we get theta is equal to tan inverse of Q sin 90 divided by P plus Q cos 90. Since sin 90 degree is 1 and cos 90 degrees is 0, theta is equal to tan inverse of q by p. So in cases where the two forces are perpendicular to each other, you can use these two simple formulae to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Case 2. The two forces are equal in magnitude. If forces P and Q have the same magnitude, for example, if P is 4 Newton, then Q is also 4 Newton, then P is equal to Q. 
Let's see what happens to the formula used for calculating the magnitude and the formula for direction of the resultant force. Before we get into the details, let's refresh our knowledge on a couple of trigonometric identities. The first trigonometric identity we're going to see is sine 2x is equal to 2 sin x cos x. Let's tweak this a little bit. Let's replace x with alpha by 2. Sine 2 alpha by 2 is equal to 2 sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2. That is sin alpha is equal to 2 sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2. The second trigonometric identity is cos 2x is equal to 2 cos x squared minus 1. Cos 2x plus 1 is equal to 2 cos squared x. Replacing x with alpha by 2, cos 2 alpha by 2 plus 1 is equal to 2 cos squared alpha by 2. Cos alpha plus 1 is equal to 2 cos squared alpha by 2. Now, let's take a look at what happens to the formula for magnitude. R is equal to square root of p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cos alpha. Since p is equal to q, R becomes square root of p squared plus p squared plus 2p squared cos alpha. That is square root of 2p squared plus 2p squared cos alpha. That is square root of 2p squared into 1 plus cos alpha. Now let's take help from one of the trigonometric identities we learnt. 1 plus cos alpha is equal to 2 cos squared alpha by 2. Applying this identity in our formula, r is equal to square root of 2p squared into 2 cos squared alpha by 2. That is 4p squared cos squared alpha by 2 r is equal to 2p cos alpha by 2. Similarly, let's simplify the formula for calculating the direction of the resultant. Theta is equal to tan inverse of q sin alpha divided by p plus q cos alpha. Since p is equal to q, theta is equal to tan inverse of p sin alpha divided by p plus p cos alpha. That is p sin alpha divided by p into 1 plus cos alpha. Theta is equal to tan inverse of sin alpha by 1 plus cos alpha. Now let's take help from trigonometric identity we learnt. Sin alpha is equal to 2 sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2. And 1 plus cos alpha is equal to 2 cos squared alpha by 2. Applying these relationships in our formula, theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2 divided by 2 cos squared alpha by 2. That is 2 sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2 divided by 2 cos alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2. The cos alpha by 2 on the numerator and the denominator gets cancelled. So theta becomes tan inverse of 2 sin alpha by 2 divided by 2 cos alpha by 2. Theta becomes tan inverse of sin alpha by 2 divided by cos alpha by 2. Since sin alpha by 2 divided by cos alpha by 2 is tan alpha by 2, theta becomes tan inverse of tan alpha by 2. In other words, theta becomes alpha by 2. So in cases where the two forces are equal in magnitude, you can use these two simple formulae to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant force.